Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.0.1 has been out for a couple of days and iOS 18.1 beta 5 or public beta 2 has been out for almost a couple weeks at this point, but there's even more features to talk about since the iOS 18.1 beta 5 is out what's new video. We'll talk about not just features and some recent news, but also the overall experience of both versions as I've been running both on my iPhone and iPad and we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video there's over 10 thousand votes and 183 comments. I've read all the comments to determine what the overall experience is like, and we'll read some of those comments toward the end of the video. So be sure to stick around for that. Now, the first thing is Apple actually updated podcasts with transcription updates this week. So podcasts has actually had transcription updates for a little while. So maybe you're in a podcast. If we go into this one and we go in here, we can go to transcription and see what they're talking about in real time. This only was supportive of a few different languages, but now Apple is adding more languages. So in iOS 17.4, they updated this with transcriptions, but now it's actually available in Brazilian, Portuguese, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Italian, Norwegian, Portuguese, and Swedish. So that should be rolling out soon if it's not already. And Apple actually had a newsroom announcement where they said Apple Podcasts spotlights narrative series. A brand new chart, category, and celebration of essential series launches today only on Apple Podcasts. So if you go into this, we can actually see those different charts. So if we go in here, Let's get out of this podcast. We can go into browse and then see new and noteworthy different series that they're sort of highlighting here. And you can go in and maybe listen to any one of these. So if you want to check them out, they're highlighting a bunch of these different series. WhatsApp this week actually got a significant update. If you're using that as your main messaging app, they've actually added filters and backgrounds for video calls. So that's now available. And then they're updating statuses as well. So it says share the love on WhatsApp status. So they're making it even better. You have status likes, private mentions, and more. So I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out and it should be available now. Something else that's rolling out is a new Apple watch activity challenge celebrating mindful month. So if we go over to Mac rumors, they actually have some of the activity status challenge awards you can win. And it says, let's bring awareness to all the ways we can take care of our mental health on October 10th, record 10 mindful minutes with any app that adds to health to get this award. So there's a bunch of different awards here. If you want to unlock those and that will take place again, I'll link this in the description. If you want to check it out. There's also a new game that's finally rolled out on the app store. So let me find the app store here. We'll go into this. And if you have Apple arcade, wait for it to load here, we now have NBA 2k 25. So that's something that they announced some time ago, and it's now available on Apple arcade. If you have that. Now, as far as new features this week, well, there are a few more worth mentioning that have been uncovered. The first thing has to do with shortcuts. In fact, a couple of them do. So if you're using shortcuts, we'll go into that, wait for it to load. We'll create a new action. And if we search for actions, there's actually a new one for control center. So if you want to add control center, we can show that. And then if we go to show, we can actually have it hide toggle, ask each time or shortcut input. So if we want it to show, we could actually assign this to show the control center directly to our action button. So if we save this hit done, we have show control center. It opens up the control center. Now we can go back into our settings. Within settings, if we go back here to our action button, if you have one, you can actually assign this to a shortcut. So there's a shortcut, choose a shortcut, and now we have a new one, show control center. So now if I press and hold the action button, it opens the control center right up. So if you want to assign it to that, you can now do that among all the other things. Also, if we go back into shortcuts, there's another action that's been added. So if we go into action again and search, what we're looking for this time has to do with health. So if we go into health, and within health, we can open a view and you have a health view for any specific area of health categories that you want to view. So that's something they've updated. If you use shortcuts, this could be super helpful. There's also an update in the camera for the camera control button. I keep wanting to call it the camera capture button, but if we double press, you can switch between different things here. And if we switch between cameras, we can now switch to ultra wide and then right into the selfie camera. So you can go to ultra wide and then selfie where that wasn't there before. So it's a nice addition if you're using this. And if you do have an iPhone 16, I'd love to hear if you're using this control or if it's just something that you've turned off or assigned to some other app. Now, the next thing is not necessarily a feature that's been added, but something that they need to add back for some users. If you connect your AirPods pro two or second generation, and it looks like I actually need to charge my AirPods case, but maybe I'll place them in my ears. 
So let me go ahead and do that. We'll place one in my ear, each one. And then if we go into the control center, maybe we'll play something connected to it. So let's connect to the AirPods here. And once they're connected, if we go into our volume settings, we go to our noise control, I have the option for off. Some people have seen this disappear. Now, I don't know if this is because maybe they haven't updated their AirPods, but either way, I'm seeing the option on both versions. So let me know if you have that issue. It seems like something they need to resolve rather than something they've removed. Now, as far as releases this week, well, Apple actually released things a little differently this week. We had a late night release of iOS 18.0.1, but we did not have any regularly expected beta updates. But if we go to Apple's public release website, scroll down, you'll see here that we had tvOS 18.1 beta three on October 1st, along with watchOS 11.1 beta three, but it looks like they pulled this due to issues. So we had some odd releases and we didn't have iOS 18.1 beta six or RC or release candidate. So maybe we'll have that next week, but we did have a new AirPods pro two beta firmware update to version seven B five zero one three C. And so that particular update goes along with AirPods pro two, maybe to prepare them for the hearing aid option. Option. However, many people that have updated have not seen that option yet. So it looks like maybe that's not here, but hopefully it will show up very soon, maybe in beta six, and then we can try it out or maybe Apple will push something else. Now, also, of course, we had all of the public releases, but next week I'm ex actually expecting iOS 18.1 RC or beta six. We don't really know which version along with iOS 18.1 public beta three, but I would expect it maybe early Monday on the seventh or maybe Tuesday, the eighth, and then possibly a release candidate. If that is the release candidate, we could expect it the following week. If not, I would expect the release candidate after that with maybe iOS 18.1 launching on the 21st. So it could be the 14th or the 21st or a little bit later if they need to complete it. But I know Apple really wants to get Apple intelligence out for the iPhone 15 pro and iPhone 16 devices, along with the M1 iPads and Macs. So that's something I look forward to. And then you'll have Siri and things like that with some writing tools and much more. Now, as far as the experience, well, we've already talked about in previous videos, iOS 17.7, but because we had iOS 18.0.1 just a couple days ago, so far I've heard some great things. Now, a few people are having poor battery life. We'll talk about that more in detail in a moment, but 18.0.1 fixed a bunch of initial issues that were on the iPhone 16 and then additional issues with messages and more. It seems like it's fixed quite a few things along with the touch bug, which still remains for iOS 18.1 betas. So it's fixed a lot of things, made it a much better experience. Many people report it's much faster and it seems like a very solid update. It had a couple security updates and I definitely recommend installing that version. As far as iOS 18.1 beta five or iOS 18.1 public beta two, well, it's been out a couple of weeks. It definitely has some bugs, but it is a beta that's expected. It's going to have some issues here and there. It has those touchscreen issues. And for me, if we go into Apple intelligence settings, it looks like it's still downloading. I have not gotten this to complete, so I can't create different things such as memories, just based on typing and certain features just don't work. Writing tools will not work. If I go into notes within notes, if I tap on writing tools here, so we'll say this is a new note, tap on the writing tools and then maybe proofread. It gives me an error saying writing tools are unavailable. Certain capabilities are unavailable at this time. Try again later. It doesn't work here, but it works on my iPad with iPad OS 18.1 beta five or public beta two. So again, if we go into maybe notes, so this is the same note, we can go into writing tools and proofread and it works just fine. And it doesn't find any issues as I wouldn't expect it to, but the features work fine on this device, but not on my iPhone for some reason. And I've heard this from quite a few people. So it's something that maybe will be resolved in the next version. It's not a huge deal as I haven't been using those features, but it is more of an annoyance. Also, one thing I'm hearing quite a bit, and this isn't necessarily 18.1, but some people are saying that their screen is flashing when they go into the notification center. They're saying that it's flashing pink. So I'm not sure why that is, but sometimes when you pull this down, nobody has been able to capture it on camera just yet. It looks like, but it flashes pink for some people on their devices. So let me know if you're experiencing that as well. 
The overall experience though has been more stable for me. There's still issues, like I said, but I'm getting better battery after a couple weeks, but there are still some issues with things such as icons disappearing, blank emoji sometimes. Let's see if I have that. So if we go into emoji, there's a bunch of blank emoji. So that's something that's happening. Some people are unable to create stickers or they're just not showing up and it looks like it's happening to me. And there's also sometimes notification delays as well. So it's very much a beta at this point with all those things happening. It's not unexpected, it's a beta, and if you're having issues, make sure you report it in the feedback app. And within feedback, under iOS and iPadOS 18.1 Beta 5 release notes, if you're having an issue, check this first and make sure that it's not listed and they know about it. If it's not listed, go ahead and submit feedback and hopefully they'll work on it based on importance. So they're definitely working on it. Again, it's a beta, there's going to be some issues and they'll resolve those issues eventually. When it comes to battery life, well, let's first take a look at iOS 18.1 beta five. I've been using it full time on my main device and battery health. I'm at 13 cycles with 100%. You can see coconut battery here to go along with that. And over the last 10 days, I think I'm getting okay battery life, not phenomenal, but okay. Three hours and one minute of screen active time, six hours and 46 minutes of screen idle time. However, you'll see today. I have 39% left. So it's doing pretty well the day before four hours and 28 minutes. And I used just over maybe 50 to 60% of my battery. So it's actually doing quite well. When it comes to iOS 18.0.1, let's take a look at that. Thanks to Connor for sending this in. And this is on an iPhone 15 pro max. Now it was last charged at 3 5 PM and it looks like it was 7 12 PM, but he actually had seven hours and two minutes of screen active time, five hours and six minutes of screen idle time. Typically he's been sending me these and he's getting about eight hours of screen active time, maybe nine hours. So it's actually doing quite well on iOS 18.0.1 so far. So it's only been a couple days, but it seems to be decent in general. Now, as far as the overall performance of the update, well, it seems to be pretty good with 18.0.1 and we'll take a look at benchmarks in a moment, but everything from scrolling is super smooth. In fact, many people have said that it fixed the glitches where people were having sort of stuttering. It just seems to be a much faster, better experience, whether it's simple things such as music. However, I have a screen protector on here and maybe that's why it didn't except the input from the touch. But in general, it seems like it's much, much better. Just going into simple apps, going into the app store, loading, going into the arcade, everything seems to be working smoothly. And as you would expect, as far as iOS 18.1 beta five, well, it's been out a couple weeks, like I said, and it seems to be okay, but on older devices, it can stutter a little bit as it seems to take a little bit more power, but in general, it seems okay. Scrolling, opening up apps. Let's open up music here give it a second. And it seems to be plenty fast. It's not incredible, but it seems to run fine on older devices. When it comes to overall heat, well, I'm happy to report it seems both iOS 18.0.1 and 18.1 beta five, at least on the iPhone 16 models seem to have very little heat. In fact, these are nice and cool to the touch. And let's take a look with the thermal camera. On iOS 18.1 beta five, we have 31.5 degrees Celsius or so. And on iOS 18.0.1, we're just at about 30 degrees Celsius. So it's actually holding up quite well. No real issues with heat, especially on the new devices. Apple did a great job getting rid of a lot of that heat. Hopefully it gets even better with future releases of iPhone, but I think they're starting to take the overall heating of it seriously where 15 pro max had some issues. I'm curious to see what iOS 18 is like once we have Apple intelligence and to see how that's actually going to work and if it's going to use a bunch of battery, but I'm sure they're working on optimizing that now. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 18.0.1, if you haven't already, it fixes enough problems that I definitely would recommend it along with the security updates. However, with iOS 18.1, if you're not on that version yet, I would hold off. I would wait for public beta three or the release candidate just to make sure they've worked out the bugs as it does seem to impact your battery when you're using Apple intelligence features. So if you want to sort of keep up battery and you need to use it throughout the day, I'd just use 18.0.1 for now and hold off for 18.1. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's take a look at that. I ran them on all three of these devices just before the video. 
And you'll see on the 16 pro max, I ran it yesterday and had better scores. So let me show you that is that was the best score. Maybe I was just doing too much with it earlier. I was working on a separate video, but from left to right, we have iOS 18.0.1 on a 16 pro max, then iOS 18.1 public beta two on an iPhone 11 and the same version on an iPhone 16 pro max. So overall the scores are pretty impressive, especially for 18.1 being a beta. They're actually higher than 18.0.1 so far. However, it could be processing still in the background and sort of working through whatever's going on there. So it's definitely pretty good, feels nice and fast. And I think most people will be happy with it, even on older devices. Now let's take a look at some of your comments and see what you had to say about the experience. Mel823 said, I have 15 Pro and I'm on iOS 18.0.1 and my battery life has gotten better since upgrading to iOS 18, but I'm also working from home now, so I'm not using my phone as heavily as when I was commuting. PPER18 said, currently on iOS 18.0.1, one iPhone 14 pro. I found my Apple CarPlay doesn't work on my car. Retry to connect, disconnect for several times, but finally could connect, but still, I don't know whether any dysfunction on their features or not. We'll see. Other than that, it's great as it should be. Mr. Hype Knight said speed on 18.0.1 definitely improved. Very responsive on iPhone 16 pro max now and haven't noticed any issues yet. Oliver Niehaus 7159 said I'm on iOS 18.1 developer beta five on an iPhone 16 pro max. One bug I'm facing is that I can't save stickers. Whenever I try to create a sticker, it initially shows up in the sticker section, but then disappears within a couple of seconds. Curious if you're having this issue. Ethan can 24 said good battery life on iPhone 14 regular Fix the touch screen issue. When I updated recommended to update if you're in iOS 18, Donald Joseph 98 said battery life on iPhone 14 pro definitely feels much more improved after coming from an RC build to 18.0.1 phone is much more cool to touch. And it looks like we're almost there with the first major release of iOS 18.1. 18.0.1 fixed the initial issues. We could see an iOS 18.0.2 before this release of 18.1, but Apple is hard at work at Apple intelligence and making everything work in the initial release. With that, just to remind you, you'll get the new Siri, at least animation, not necessarily the smarter version. We should have the writing tools I showed you earlier, the option to actually create things when we go into photos. So if we go into memories and within memories, if we go to create memories, mine isn't working on this device since it's downloading but that's something that we should be able to actually do a little bit later. Also, we'll have those writing tools, like I mentioned, along with suggestions in messages. So we'll have a few of those things to start and then they'll roll out other features such as the Gen Moji and image playground a little bit later. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think we're almost there just a couple more to go. So let me know what you think of it so far in the comments below. And if you found any additional features in iOS 18.0.1 or 18.1 beta five or public beta two, I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it free in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.